Hi, I am Katie. My screen or my uh, computer is operate set like this. You guys can see what I'm doing. Um, and I'll be doing the canvas demonstration along with you guys as you're painting. So if you're like either like stuck on something or anything like that, you could see how I'm doing it and then maybe adapt that to what you're doing or just like watch me if you think it's cool or whatever. Um, I'm part of Beach Pride events and I'm collaborating on this event with um, Beach Balance and I've been with Beach Pride events for about two and a half years now. Um, this is actually my first uh, like live event that I'm doing. So I'm glad to have all you guys here. Thank you. And Min? Awesome. Hi, I'm Min. Uh, <laughs> you can't see my face right now since I have my camera pointed towards my iPad. But uh, like Katie, I'm also going to be doing drawing the mountains today. But one difference is like I'm going to be using Procreate on iPad to do it. So you can pin my screen to see how I'm doing it if you're using iPad and then pin Katie's if you're doing it with Canvas. Um, and yeah, we're really happy awesome. to have you guys here. Thank you, Min. So um, that was Katie and Min. Um, my name is Madison and I'm gonna be the Beach Bounce assistant or Beach Bounce lead now. Um, and let's go ahead and get this show on the road. So today we're gonna be doing art, um, our guided art class. Um, it's really popular. We usually have it in person, um, but you know, it could be easier for you guys since you're at home, maybe have more paint options or markers or however you want to do it. You do not have to do it. As you can see, Min's doing it electronically, so you guys really could do use whatever you want. You guys can go ahead and pin later on Katie or Min's screen, whichever one you feel comfortable with. So um, let's go ahead and get started and just talk a little bit about some guided art. So um, you may ask yourself, why would I join this guided art class or why do guided art? Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. And some I mentioned right here, um, you may not think of it as a stress relief, but guided art is a form of definitely, definitely a way to get away from things that you have going on in your life or assignments that are due and kind of focus yourself on something that, um, you know, can let you use creative side. So it can also be fun. So you're keep getting your mind off of other things, you know, using your creative, um, juices in your head, getting other areas maybe you're not used to using, um, and try to do something maybe you're not comfortable with. Let's say you're not a good painter or you haven't painted ever in your life. Um, I found it as a really great stress relief. Um, like I said, it's very fun. You get to use, you know, another maybe aspect of um, your personality that you're not always using. So I think that's really fun. Um, it's also a really great sentimental gift um, and um, a learning experience as well because maybe you're new, like I said, and um, are trying to figure out, you know, how to exactly, you know, paint over, um, make fading colors. And, you know, that also goes into, um, what's it, um, that also goes into problem solving. Because when it comes to painting, um, the paint isn't too, forget too, forgive too forgiving. So let's say you have a white canvas and you're drawing a sunset and you actually drop some black paint. You have to work with that and you have to figure out how to fix that. Um, you know, maybe you don't want your painting to be perfect, but you maybe you do want no, not a black blob in the middle of your canvas. There's a lot of problem solving that comes into painting, so I think it's really good to al almost like stimulate your brain in that sense as well. So let's move on. This is a stress free zone, um, so everyone try to relax and take your mind off maybe an assignment or anything work related that you have going on right now. Um, so today's materials, I'm going to give you guys some time to go grab these. Most importantly, you're going to need white paint, blue paint. You're also going to need some black paint, which was not mentioned, um, orange and yellow paint. Um, for other materials, uh, let's say you guys have actual um, paint swatches that have like little circles for the paint. That's great. Um, paint trays are great. You could use a play. Um, you could even use um, like little muffin trays. That works too. Um, as you can see, Katie's just using um, a paper plate and she's just putting her dots of paint on there. Um, you're gonna need a canvas or whatever surface you're looking to use. Um, some napkins, just in case. If you don't have a lot of paint brushes, you're gonna need to you know, wipe those off, um, dip them in water, so make sure to have a cup of water. Um, a few paint brushes for sure for each color, 
um, with different sizes if you have available and a pencil if you're wanting to trace it out before. If you're wanting to trace it out before, um, I'm going to show you an image of the, the final product and then you guys can quickly trace it. Um, I like to freehand things and kind of just see how they turn out. But if you maybe are a perfectionist and want to make it perfect, um, I'll stay on that slide a little longer. Maybe you guys should just take a picture of it to be able to trace it afterwards. And then I'll let you guys um, get some, spend some time gathering this stuff. Um, does everybody, has everybody gathered everything? Um, if anyone wants to share. Oh. Oh, I also want to add one more thing. If, mm -hmm. I don't know if this will be needed later um, in the painting, but sometimes I like to use a hair dryer to like dry the paint, especially since, you know, we go from like doing the background, something more in the foreground. And if your background is completely mm -hmm. dry, it can kind of mess up your colors in the foreground. So if you guys have a spare hair dryer, even like a fan, if you're using that like right now, since it's so hot recently, um, that can be used as a tool later on. Um, when we get to the later steps of the painting. Awesome, thank you, Katie, for that. And um, let me just check, do you guys have your materials? Um, any of you guys wanna, yeah, I'm nodding. Okay, awesome, thank you guys for confirming. Um, so let's move on. So this is today's painting. It's, very, it's really simple, kind of vibrant. I really like the, you know, dark mountain ranges, fading to the light, and light mountain ranges, um, and the sunset fading pink to orange. Um, but you guys do not have to go with this color scheme. You guys could do blue as a sunset, green mountain, brown mountain, purple sun. I mean, really whatever you guys, what color paint you have, honestly, that's what it comes down to. And, you know, how creative or how different you want to make your canvas. So if you guys want to sketch this out with a pencil, you guys can go ahead and take a picture of this because I'm going to soon move on. So um, go ahead and do that. And then I recommend pinning mid or Katie's screen so you guys can get an um, uh, uh, image of someone demonstrating it um, after I explain kind of the steps for you guys. So, okay, let's see. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move on. So this is step one. For step one, Basically, you're just going to be using your, start by using the orange and your yellows, as well as your white. And you're going to start about a third of the way down from the top and paint from the top up. So you're going to leave that like third at the bottom, maybe fourth at the bottom open for your mountain ranges um, and start painting the middle up, uh, a little more than middle up. Um, and I'll let Katie and, um, and Min show you guys. Um, them doing it yeah so like as madison said we'll be starting with the sky the sunset and especially the orange part for me i like to add like a base coat of white down to the canvas so then as you're putting as you're layering other colors on top of it they can blend in more with the white more so than the canvas so for me this just aids with the blending process what are you starting with min so on Procreate, I'm actually going to pick my brush first. Um, I'm looking at a wet acrylic brush, so something similar to what you're doing right now. Um, what colors are you using for your, what colors did you mix? Let's see. Right now, I just have plain white, just like a standard orange and then a standard yellow. And then throughout the blending process of all the colors, I think, will accomplish the final color okay. that we're looking for. Okay. But I know with you, like, you're a lot, not, not that you're more particular, but it's a lot <laughs> more specific in where, like, you can already, like, choose a blended color, you know, rather mm -hmm. than, like, blending it um, on a canvas. Yeah. Canvas is cool. So with mine, it's a little bit harder to blend, so I'm just going to choose a color, like, an orange color that I like. Um, so I'm going to choose this one, and then what I'm going to do is similar to Katie, where she's going in strokes from like left to right or right to left. I'm going to keep doing that until I get a nice sunset. How did you get involved with Procreate? 
Um, so I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how to do that. And yeah, that, that's basically it. How did you get into painting? Hmm, I guess, or well, when my next door neighbor, she, when we were in middle school slash elementary, um, we were like really close, you know, next door neighbors hang out all the time and all that type of stuff. And during the summer, her mom actually put her in this um, art camp slash class. And Ooh. so she was like, hey, you should go take this summer camp with me. It'll be cool. And it was cool. I actually ended up liking it a lot. And through there, that was basically when I was like introduced to not, I guess, quote unquote, fine art. Because, you know, like we did like painting. We worked mm -hmm. with some clay. We did acrylic painting, um, like watercolor type, like markers. Um, that sort of stuff. And that's basically where I got my start in art. And then, you know, just like doodling in my notebook during class <laughs> when uh, the professor isn't necessarily piquing my interest, so to say. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's basically where I started with art. Do you do any like sort of graphic design with Procreate or you just kind of like do it for fun? I actually do, but I prefer just like painting stuff that are is abstract because that way it allows my brain to like rest a little after classes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then remember guys, if you don't like your color that you have right now, keep blending. You can either add any color that you want more of, like if you added too much orange maybe, you can add a little bit more white to either lighten that up and to mute it or even more yellow to change the color entirely. So just keep blending. Yeah, also, um, you guys could add, simply just dip your brush in some water, very little, little bit of water, and it'll really help you guys blend your colors in together. If it's too, you know, streaky and you want more of a blend, definitely try dipping it in some water. Um, if once you've dried out, maybe you're not dried out, but got the paint off of your brush, it'll help you guys blend the oranges and yellows together. So um, Katie and Min, just let me know when you guys are ready for step two. I know Min, um, yours might be a little easier um, since it's not as much of a blending process you have to do. So just let me know when you guys are ready to go. I think I'm ready. Are you ready, Katie? I'm just adding a little bit more white because I want to be like a tiny bit more pastel. But then I think I'll be ready. Just give me like 15 seconds. How are you guys doing at home? See. Okay, well, it looks like everybody's doing good. They've started painting. Uh, let's see. Ashley, how's yours going, coming along? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Using paint, I see. Oh, oh nice. Cesar, I like that one. Allison, how's yours coming along? Oh. Hi, another Allison. Looks good. Thank you for sharing, you guys. Really appreciate it. All right. I think I'm done with step one right now. This is awesome. what I have That's going great. on, like a little gradient from white slash creamsicle orange to a little bit more vibrant orange to a little bit of yellow at the top. Uh -huh. Looks great. Nice job, you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share um, my screen. So here is step two. Um, we're going to go ahead and paint white streaks at the top um, for blending into the orange, which you guys kind of somewhat did, um, but more of a blend. So let me just go to step three because I think it'll show a better image of this. So right here on step three, it shows you begin with blending the orange that you have in the middle section with the white at the top. So you're going to definitely use a solid white at the top and make it a little fading from a white to an orange um, and then if you want to fade back down to white you can whatever you guys feel comfortable now I'm gonna let Min and Katie take it from here all right just following the instructions getting my white and just painting it across the top and then eventually blending the orange that we already have down in with the white to create even more of a gradient for me, I'm going to pick the same color as before, but I'm going to go into my settings and I'm going to play around with the colors a bit so it's like a little bit lighter. So if if you can see my screen right now, like there's a little circle indicating what the color originally is and now I'm making it a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna use that for my top. Additionally, you don't have to do this step. 
but um, that's if you if you just want it to look a little bit more orange. I'm finding for me my paint is like basically already dry, so no worries if that's happening to you also because it is kind of hotter right now, especially in my back room that I'm in. Um, but no worries in that case, either add more white, and I'm right now I'm adding white, a little bit of yellow and orange, then direct, directly painting that on the canvas so all of the colors kind of blend into each other. You guys are looking really good. Um, so let me know when you guys are ready for the fourth step. It's definitely going to be a fun step because we get to use another color. Yes, I really like how this is turning out. Ooh, that looks nice. Thank you. Wait, let me look at yours. Ooh, I feel like a time lapse of what you're doing would be really cool because, like, <laughs> not not ASMR, but like ASMR for the eyes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um. Uh, let's see. Anyone oh, and then also. Oh, share? sorry. No, you're good. Does anyone want to share their painting? How it's coming along? If you haven't already. Nice. Ooh. I like your guys's. Like you guys are doing it together. Fun. Ooh, nice. Okay. I was just going to say right now, I'm not really worrying about the edges of my canvas. Um, depending on preference, whatever you guys like, you can either continue the colors down the sides of the canvas, or for me, what I'm going to do, I think, at the end is just um, paint the whole outside one solid color. I'm not sure what color that will be yet, but that's just my plan as of right now. Awesome. Are you guys ready for the next step? I believe I am. Oh, All right. Awesome. So let's see. Nice job. It's really good. The blending is really great. Um, let's see. The next step is going to be step four. Uh, let's see. So now we're going to be able to use some pink. We're going to do a pink streak on the top where we had done that white. Hopefully the white has dried some bit. If not, it's okay. It'll make like a lighter pink. It's totally fine. And we're going to blend it into the orange for more of a sunset appeal. If you guys want to use um, blue, uh, purple, go ahead. Really any color will work here. It's a sunset, so you guys can really shoot with any color. Okay, and now you guys can go ahead and demonstrate. Awesome. Yeah. Great. If you guys don't already have a pink in your paint set, you can always add um, Oh, there's like a tiny bit of red with white because usually if you add too much red, a lot of times the red takes over and then becomes just a lighter red, not necessarily a pink. And that's what I did um, on my palette since I don't have just like an exact pink paint. But anyways, you can always customize whatever colors that you guys do have with your other colors. Um, like some classic paint theory, you have the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And then from adding white or adding those three colors together, you get our like secondary colors like green, orange, uh, purple, the secondary colors. And then, um, yeah, just basically adding whatever other color you want to your already pre existing colors gives you always a new color palette to enjoy. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys, you guys who are attending and participating. Just a little question. Um, you guys can either um, share your screen and do a reaction that way, or you guys can go to the bottom of your screen and do a reaction. Um, there's a little reaction um, section. So you guys, if you can clap, if you guys have ever participated in one of our past art therapy workshops. So I can just see. Okay, Ruby, awesome. Thank you. Looks like it's coming along, Katie. Yes, it is. I think for my top right now, all of it is kind of looking, well, I like the pastel look that it has right now, but I want yeah. the top to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to add, I think, just like red directly to the top and not so much pink. Uh huh. Yeah, if you mix your red with uh, white, it should make a very light pink as well. For those following me on Procreate, 
all you need to do is just like trace over go over the the canvas with your brush a couple times for it to be a little bit darker Ooh, i like how yours is looking a lot Thank i think you. it'd be interesting watching yours almost because it's like a little not it's like a little bit more technical and not so much yeah. traditional. I think I would go crazy with the colors because there's like endless limit of colors. The next step is also really exciting because we do get to start using our blues and I'm a huge blue fan so I'm excited to see how those come out. I have to go to class but I rushed mine and I already finished. Bye. Oh, oh my nice. gosh. Can we see it? <laughs> I was like, I know I have 30 minutes. <laughs> wow, that looks good. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining. Thank you for attending. Bye. Wow, that was fast. I guess we have to step on the pedal. <laughs> it is so fast. It's been like 20 minutes. Wow. But again, you guys are taking your time, you know. Yeah, no rush, you guys. If you're still on the orange step or just getting to the pink sky step, no worries. Art is a process. Yeah, so if we're ahead of you guys, don't worry. I'll let you guys, you know, take a picture of the final product so you guys can work on it, you know, later if you want to. Um, we tend to finish before a lot of our participants just because, um, you know, we are, like, have all our stuff out and we're all prepared and, you know, on camera, when you're on camera, you just kind of rush. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready for the next um, step? Yes, I believe I am right now. Ooh. This is what I have going Ooh, on. I darkened so the upper part a little bit, and the rest is kind of the same. Yeah, Katie, that looks so good. You blend really well. Thank and then you. yours looks good, too. It's so, like, clear. <laughs> looks good. So, let's see the next step. This is going to be step five, everybody. So we're going to be adding a light blue, um, the lightest light blue you have, um, at the bottom of the edge where it meets the orange. So basically, hopefully your orange is dry by now. We're going to be going over that with the blue, not straight across. We don't, we don't want one straight line like linear. We want it more of like a mountain range. So let me see if the next picture, the next slide has more of a, a line for you guys to follow. Right here um is the mountain range so you guys can see there's about four little little points or i guess two main points so you guys can follow this or you know feel free to draw your own mountain ranges uh, i'm going to go ahead and let the katie and Min show you right now i'm just just mixing a light blue in the corner of my palette and since the reference photo is a little so all the blues are a little bit more like green turquoise -ish tone, I think I might add a little bit of dark green to mine and see what we get from doing that. For me, I'm just watching some colors to see which one would fit like well with the orange. I think these look good. Um, hmm. How are you going to erase those, man? I'm just so what I did was I created a separate layer so I could oh. just delete this layer and then use that color in the background on layer one. Wow. So yeah. That is amazing. Oh, so it's kind of like Photoshop and how you have different layers almost. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I took in high school I took a, like a photography class and they kind of learned how to do use Photoshop. Um, all those skills are now gone. <laughs> you know, I still remember like a tiny bit. <laughs> still mixing my color here, but I think I'm getting pretty close to the final product that I would like. Right. I think this is good. Right now, I kind of, yeah, you can kind of see. I like a light sea foam teal green almost. I will start painting my ranges, my mountain ranges. Awesome. Oh, this is nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Just do a couple, um, yeah, that looks good, man. A couple sh sharp points. You know, it could be symmetrical or it could be unsymmetrical, however you guys want to do it.
here are my points right now. They're pretty rough, um, but I'm going to clean those up right okay. now. Yeah, it's going to be um, a couple of points. nice men so Thank it looks you. like are you able to use like a bigger like different size brushes too yeah i can also use instead of wet acrylic brush i can also use a flat brush or a regular acrylic brush and with that it just gives me different textures however mm -hmm. i like the the texture of the wet acrylic because it looks like you're actually painting right on uh -huh. yeah i do like that What's your favorite thing to paint or draw men on Procreate? Um, I like drawing plants. I find that it's really relaxing. And also like animals. Nice. How about you? What do you like to paint? Hmm. In my paint camp that I mentioned earlier, we all kind of like had to do the same sort of project, you know, so the teacher could like teach all of us the same thing. I painted a hummingbird back then with acrylic paint, and I thought it looked pretty nice. I don't know if I could do it that nice <laughs> now, which is kind of funny, thinking about, like, how I technically should be able to do something even better now that I'm older, mm -hmm. but thinking to do something that kind of, like, realistic kind of throws me off. So recently I haven't, like, painted anything, but I like drawing just, like, little doodles, like, little characters or, like, dinosaurs or whatever. Um, but hopefully I'll be getting back into painting, especially with this series that we have going on right now. Very nice. All Can right, so when it comes to this light blue mountain range, we don't want to go all the way down to the bottom of the canvas just because we're going to have some other mountain ranges that are going to kind of meet the bottom line of those ranges um, with blue as well, but it's going to be a different darker shade. So this is where your black can come into play. They're going to mix um, some blue paint with a black, just a little dot of black to make it slightly darker. And then we're going to do another shade of a darkest blue with a couple drops of black. And that'll be um, the last three, the last one. So there'll be three different shades of black, uh, blue total. Looking good. I like your mountain ranges. They're really sharp. Katie, it looks great. Oh, thank you. Does anyone else want to share their mountain ranges, maybe? If not, it's totally fine. Nice, oh, nice, Shirley. Nice. That's a large canvas. So <laughs> it's going to take longer than that. Nice. I'm not sure why. I like that. Those gray, they look like a nice, nice color mountain. Oh, Chris also shared his. In it. Yeah, if she, it was, um, yeah, I can see. It's like a grayish. I like the color. I'm really into, like, realistics, and when it comes to mountain ranges, I'm like, blue? <laughs> what do you mean, blue? <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing about painting, is it can be any color you want it to be. All right, so it looks like you guys are done with step one. Hopefully everyone is following along in a, around the same step as us. As I saw, it looks like um, Shirley and Chris, theirs was pretty much on the same page as us. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share the next step. So we just finished this step six, which was finishing the first mountain range across the bottom of the canvas. The second is going to be um, adding a darker mountain range right below that light mountain range and kind of in opposite of the peaks of the light range so you know right where the mountain goes up you're going to be going down or where it goes down you're going to be going up with this mountain range and it's going to be slightly darker so maybe you have a different blue or you could even just add some black to the next uh to the blue you originally used so i'm going to go ahead and let mid and katie show you um as for min he can just pick any blue. Um, as you can see, Katie is going to be actually blending her blue to make it a bit darker. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just took the original blue that I have on my um, canvas now. I had a little bit left over, so I just decided to add a little bit of a dark blue to that to, you know, kind of like incorporate the same tone of the first blue now with the second one. And I think I will also use my blow dryer since my mountain ranges are still a little bit wet and I don't want the colors to really blend. So I'm going to be on mute so you guys don't have to hear the sound of a blow dryer. Oh, yeah. Doing uh, that. <laughs> for me, I swatch my colors again. And now I'm just going to trace the mountains and color them in. So I'm gonna use. That's so nice just to be able to, you know, yeah. see what color looks best and then erase it. <laughs> Looks good. So and make... then to get rid of the bottom mid, yeah. like how you can see the underneath, you just make it a little bit thicker. Or... Yeah, I'm a <laughs> draw one right here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So for these melons, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger than the background melons, since like if you're looking at a picture perspective wise like the closer you are to like the camera like uh -huh. the bigger it is so I'm trying to imitate that in the art okay All right, I'm done with that and they're dry. So now let's go on to the next set of mountains. Awesome. So yours is like a little darker blue, right, Katie? Yes. Awesome. Looking good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and ask you guys another question for those that are participating. Um, if you guys could click on the reactions at the bottom and do a thumbs up if you guys um, enjoyed this workshop so far. Awesome. Wow, that's so good to see. Thank you guys all for the support. Love all the thumbs up. Love to see it. Thank you, guys. The paintings are really coming along. I really like this one. Um, I kind of am jealous and wish this was one of the ones that I had painted because I could, you know, this would go so well on my wall. But, you know, the watermelon that I drew last time, you know, it looks good on the wall. So what I'm doing right here is just touching up some of my melons because they have a little, they're a little transparent. Oh, there's a dot there. Yeah, so like what Maddie mentioned earlier, sometimes when you're painting or doing artwork, you sometimes make a mistake or yeah. like drop some paint somewhere. So you just got to improvise. So what I'm going to do oh, is... Oh, says the one with the electronic canvas. Hey, <laughs> I'm a... Well, like if I erase, it's going to like erase the whole thing since I'm on one layer. Oh, So geez. I'm just going to go back in with my orange uh -huh. and just make it disappear. Wow. Smart. Problem solving right there. Uh, it's fine. Huh? 
How's everyone doing with their mountain ranges? Yes, let's go ahead and see if you guys are willing to share. I'd like to see your painting. How it's coming along. Nice. I really Ooh, like the dark blue on I yours. Like the color. Same, Shirley. You guys Shirley. look really good. Yours is long. I like how the mountain range is so long. You guys are moving along the same speed as us, so that's great. Usually we're always like speed racers do this and <laughs> people haven't like painted the painting before we've done the sketch. All right. So it looks like Mim's done. Katie, how are you doing? I believe I am done right now. I had a little bit of a mishap with this peak over here. It was kind of too much towards the angle of this one here. So you're kind of, kind of blending together. Oh. So I just had to like improvise and keep making this a little bit taller. <laughs> A little but, tall, you're like, well, you know, like, I think it looks pretty color. decent still. It looks yeah. all right. They all look very even, so I like that. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. So as you can see, we just did step seven. So for step eight, we're going to go even darker. We're going to use, um, continue with the mountain ranges, but use the darkest blue or light blue mixed with black. So we're going to want the darkest blue you possibly can make. Um, and we're just going to make more mountain ranges. This, uh, as you can see, doesn't go all the way across. This one goes halfway through your canvas. So make sure to um, stop halfway through and uh, leave room at the bottom for another dark, uh, another dark uh, mountain range. I'll show you guys step nine just so you get the gist of the bottom range too. So as you can see, um, there's a darker range right here. So I'm going to go back now to step eight for you. So we're going to go on to doing this section right here, the third mountain range, and then maybe the very bottom sliver of the darkest um, on the bottom left corner of the right image. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let Katie and Min demonstrate. Right now for me, I'm just taking a really dark blue that I have, and then I think I'll also blow dry my mountain ranges as well. What about you, Min? Uh, right now I'm trying to swatch some colors to see what works well. Um, I already picked a color for my last mountain range, so let me try to find something in between. Is that Let me all right see. back to painting. All right, let's see how it's coming along. You're using like a royal blue almost. I really like the color. Um, remember, you guys are going to have to go even darker than this one for the very bottom section. Um, and then this third one isn't going to go all the way across. It's just going to go halfway through. Um, yeah. Let's see. Men, I can't. Okay, then I can see yours now. So you're going with just like a different color blue. Yeah. Blue green. Blue green, I like that. Looks a little bit darker, but it's... Yeah, it's almost like darker that. in a different way, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more like green tone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mine, like sure. I kind of started out green tone, but now it's kind of like shifting more. I so like it's that actual blue. blue. Yeah. yeah, so for the last blue, you're going to... Do you have a black color? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Looks good. Um, so you already went on and did your um, 
halfway through mountain range, so now you can start blending for your uh, very last mountain range. It's like super, super dark. I always use way too much paint. I always like squirt out all <laughs> of my paint in on like one plate and then realize I literally used a dab of it. I know, I feel like I should like all my orange and my yellow still there. It's yeah, okay. I know, but that's like not a lot. I use so much every time I do it. I over I over like estimate how much paint I'm gonna need. You can always squeeze more paint out, but you can't put more back in the tube. I know, that's the <laughs> worst thing. Like, and then you feel like you wasted all this paint. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to use, like, that color again, and you're like, well, I remember <laughs> that day when I used the whole bottle <laughs> on the canvas. So once you guys finish doing um, the medium darkest um range halfway through your canvas um underneath that second range you're going to do the bottom left corner as dark as you can of another range starting and then i believe the next step will be finishing that very bottom range mine is not dark enough i need to add more black That might have been too much. Awesome. It's coming along really nicely. Katie, is that your color you went in with black? Yes. Okay. It's okay. like almost black, but still has a hint of blue. <laughs> and then the one on the left, is that slightly different? Yeah, that's the other blue. Yeah, I really like how those colors, like, are exactly the same, but they're really similar. So they, like, mm -hmm. look like they could be, like, close in proximity or something. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second step since you're on the darkest shade. And it looks like um, Min is, I can't really tell. Min, what oh. section are you on? I'm on oh, the you're darkest shade. The darkest one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, you guys are just ahead of me. Okay. So let's go on into the final few steps. Um, as you can see, they are right now on this section right here, which is finishing the bottom with, with doing the darkest mountains possible at the very, very bottom. So once um, Katie and Min finish this section, um, we'll go ahead and do the very, very last step. Um, and I hope everyone's following along and, you know, in the same kind of step as us. Um, and then at the end, we could share everyone, so everyone can see how everyone that participated looked like, everyone painting looks, final product looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and unshare my screen, unless you guys want me to keep it shared, I was going to unshare it. And Minute and Katie can demonstrate the very bottom section. Yep, I think I'm ready for the last section for this. I think I'm just going to have to use black since um, this color right here is kind of like almost black <laughs> itself so we're just going all the way this time okay so while katie is doing that i'm going to show you guys something cool you can do with your back mounts so what you can do is you can take a little bit of white 
if you're using a brush, like make sure you like dab it on the, if you have a paper towel, just so you get a little bit of paint. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure the brush is small and you're just gonna trace the mountains in the back a bit. And you can make like little triangle shaped things like I'm doing here. And essentially like you're gonna make snow in the back Ooh. mountains. What I'm doing is I'm only tracing, let's see, the the right side of the triangle. So say if the sun was like right here, like the shadow would be on the left side of the mountain. So you would only chase the right side. If your sun is going to be on your left, you would do the opposite. So up to you. And of course, you don't have to do this step. This is just optional if you have time. Awesome. I'm going to ask you guys another little question for you guys to react to. Um, so go ahead and clap with your reactions if you guys want more of these art, um, these guided art workshops for fall. And let me just see everybody awesome so about half of the class participants a little bit more than half that's awesome to see thank you guys really appreciate it and we do have more coming this semester so that's gonna be great for you guys okay so it looks like men men's about i think almost done with his melon is that right men yeah finish adding snow i think it looks good yeah i like it i like your little personalized touches katie how's yours coming along Ooh, that looks good um i'm just doing the very last uh, mountains just my black mountains right now <laughs> yeah i like it though i liked it thank you Um, so the last step is really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just move on to that since you're just touching some stuff up. So the last step is step 10. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be just a little white circle right above your mountain ranges, maybe like an inch or less above. Um, it could be white. It could be yellow. Whatever you want to make, it's going to be your sunset or moon. Um, ideally, um, the sun is setting, so it would be the sun, but maybe the sun's rising and the moon's dropping, you know, whatever you guys want to draw. Um, I like the white just because it adds some, um, contrast to the other dark colors. Um, but you guys could use any color, maybe even black if you want. So go ahead and draw your circle. Um, I'm going to go on to the next slide so you guys can see the final product. Yeah, I feel like here is where your blow dryer would come or fan would come in handy, especially because you know, like it's really hard to make white even whiter if there's another color in there. So even if it seems dry, like mine seems like ninety percent dry, I'm still gonna hit it with a blow dryer just to make sure. Yeah, that's smart. Um, if you guys need to do that, go ahead and do that. Hopefully, your orange is already dry since that was around the first steps that we did. Especially if you did like a lighter a lighter layer, maybe it'll be a little a little dry by now.
How is everyone doing with their paintings? Oh, that is very nice. Nice touches. Or... Lynn, do you have a tool where you can like have an exact circle? I feel like that would be helpful right now. Yeah, like for me, yeah. you can just draw a circle and it will like create a exact circle. So let me show you. Like it just knows you're trying to draw a circle so it'll just Yeah, draw so like if you draw a circle and you hold it for a bit, it will like draw a circle. Wow. Wow. I'm I jealous. like, I just like like the look of the imperfect Not sun. Not yeah. Yeah. So that's like it's a aesthetic realistic. itself. Yeah. And you guys can do your sun or moon wherever you want on the left, mm -hmm. right, middle, all the way at the top. I mean, you can make it as big as the sunset. You can make it as tiny as a pencil drop or dot. So really make it your own. For me, I did on the right side since I drew my snow on the right side. So I just wanted that like little effect. So that's one thing you can yeah, do when thinking really cool. about, yeah. And Min, do you like the snow? <laughs> I like the snow. It's an aesthetic. Yeah, it's pretty. Let me see. Add some... Katie, how is your sun coming along? It's coming pretty good. I'm trying to make it as round as possible. Uh, but you know, like how you keep adding one line and then, yeah, and then it, just it becomes you. less circular and I just keep adding more and more. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Min, it looks like you have so many settings. I would yeah. <laughs> feel I was just that. looking. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm finished. All right, awesome. So if you guys look at Min's screen, his um, iPad, he's finished doing it on Procreate. It looks so good. Um, if anyone else is finished as well as him, um, go ahead and show us your paintings. I know um, I figured Min's would be done earlier than everyone's because he did electronically. I like that, Shirley. I like the red dots. Yeah, oh, I just wow. I really do like Jessica, I really like your mountain ranges. Ashley, I really like how big they are. Do you guys show us yours? Oh, I think they already did. Oh, they showed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks good as well. I think I'm going to add one last touch to mine, adding kind of like little stars. And I so your circle I'm going to do that with white is basically wet my brush. Make sure it's not like soaking wet, but make sure it still has like a decent amount of water. Then mix that with my white paint. And then kind of like flick my brush towards the canvas. And then that creates kind of like little tiny dots aka stars. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. Very unique. So I'm going to go ahead and um, move on with the rest of the presentation since we only have a few minutes left. So this is everyone's final product. Thank you guys for sharing it. I thought it looked really good. I like how yours is really um, a vertical canvas, more rectangle. Let's see. Um, for the next thing, we have some future events. I would like if you guys want to screenshot, take a picture of these. These are our next um, events that are going to be coming up. The soonest, or the one that's like more, like very close to us would be the DIY Wellness. Um, and that's going to be on the 22nd um, at 5 o'clock. It's also going to be live. All of our events will be live. And then our next event is going to be a meal prep 101. It's going to be awesome. Um, recommend you guys coming to that one. It's going to be about lunch ideas for um, food, food recipe for, for lunch. And then as you can see, the rest of our events. The next guided art will be on October 21st. So go ahead and mark your calendars, you guys, if you're interested in coming along to that one. Um, I'll give you a few you know, seconds to take a picture of this and let you guys go um, you know, on time, so you guys can go ahead and take a picture of this.
or you guys can go to our um, Beach Sync account and go ahead and check out all of our events and the time that they are. Shirley, your painting looks really great. I really appreciate all you guys for showing us your paintings and really participating and trying to be interactive with us. That's really awesome and really appreciate it. And it's good to see other people painting it as well, you know, um, or maybe just wanting to watch um, our demonstrators um, paint it for you and show you guys it. Let's see, do you guys have any questions? Thank you guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot Ooh, it in the chat. That is also cool. um, But thank you guys for coming, and we hope to see you at our next event. Do you guys have a good night? It was good to see you all, and we appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Yours looks so good. I really like how, like, realistic that one looked. Thank you. Bye, Thank guys. you guys for coming.